glorious day outside. Uh, however, I am about to go and spend the next eight hours or so in a windowless box uh, here in Stockley Park in London. Uh, it's the Formula E radio studio and I'll be doing it alongside this man. Hi there, we're going to be spending the day. No royal wedding for us, just, uh, <laughs> just Formula E. Yeah, we've just been talking about, we realise that um, we're probably up against it today. We've got uh, up against the Formula E race and our radio broadcast is the FA Cup final, of course, this afternoon uh, and, of course, the Royal Wedding. So we do appreciate that uh, if anybody is watching or listening to us on the radio, you must be hardcore fans. So hope you enjoy it. You've reached your destination. <laughs> You've reached your destination. So just about to record uh, the opener for the show now which I have scribbled down on a bit of paper. Um, just about to uh, to record that so that when we come on air, this bit will slot into a perfectly executed time slot in between a couple of bits of recorded audio that we already have and will be nice and slick. That's the idea anyway. Hello, Emma, can you hear me? Ah, good, excellent. Hello and welcome to Formula E Radio, bringing you live and exclusive audio coverage of the 2017-18 ABB FIA Formula E Championship. As we come towards the business end of the season... How was that for time? Long. Long? Yeah. Okay. Uh, the weekend, these are the bits of the road that the French team has always had since they started last season. Uh, sorry guys, just... One sec. Sorry, that last bit uh, where you've got stay with us for the action qualifying and then from 4.45, is that the race time we're on air? Okay. okay. Hello and welcome to Formula E Radio, bringing you live and exclusive audio coverage of the 2017-18 ABB FIA Formula E Championship. As we come towards the business end of the season, the ABB Formula Stay with us for the action from qualifying and then from 4.45 British summer time, we'll... Sp Sorry. <laughs> is it okay so we could just go uh sort of forget that bit and just say uh formula e recon formula e reconvenes this time out in the german capital yeah yeah that's it yeah that's exactly that was saying we're be fine okay yeah yeah let's give it a go okay Hello and welcome to Formula E Radio, bringing you live and exclusive audio coverage of the 2017-18 ABB FIA Formula E Championship. We would reconvene this time out in the German capital Berlin. For... Stay with us for all the action from qualifying and then from 4.45 British summer time, we'll bring you all the build-up and live race commentary of the 2018 BMW i Berlin e -Prix. Yeah, happy? Excellent, cheers. Got there in the end. So we've got just under an hour now until we go on air for qualifying. Um, and then we've got a big gap before the race. Um, as we said earlier, we are up against some big events this time out. We've got the FA Cup final, of course, and the Royal Wedding. Uh, so as I said earlier, if you're watching this, we massively, or listening to us rather, of course, on the radio. Um, yeah, just remember how radio works. You don't watch it, do you? Um, <laughs> but we massively appreciate your commitment because that shows what a hardcore fan you must be. And I haven't yet introduced our third guest this week, Claire Hi. Cottingham. Hello. Hi. Uh, Claire's been on before. Um, so it'll be Claire, uh, Harrison and myself in the studio bringing you all of the action over the course of today. Uh, hope you enjoy it. Right, time to head back into the studio for qualifying. Well, that was pretty intense. Qualifying is done. Um, I always find those hours, like it's only an hour or so that we're on air, but I always find I come out the end of it and I'm knackered. As soon as we come off air, I'm absolutely shattered. Um, quite an intense qualifying session, loads of action. <laughs> Uh, some really good laps, really great laps, standout laps from Daniel Apps, um, but also some surprises. Uh, Oliver Turvey, uh, Jerome D'Ambrosio leaping up into the top five where we perhaps wouldn't have expected it. So loads of action, um, 
to Andre Lotterer hit the wall, Lucas de Grassi messed up his lap. We basically set up for a pretty good Berlin E Prix this afternoon. Um, so I'm really looking forward to it. But now though, time for lunch. Hello, I'm Mark Priestley and you're listening to Formula E Radio for full live radio commentary of the 2018 BMW i Berlin e Prix, Round 9 in the 2017-18 ABB FIA Formula E Championship. Alongside me in the studio is professional racing driver Harrison Newey. Uh, Harrison, welcome back. We've sat through a riveting qualifying session, didn't we, this morning? And it was homeboy Daniel Apps, as we said, the guy in front of his own crowd who put in a stunning lap to pop it on pole position. Yeah, it was a great qualifying session. It's not all we expected yeah, and, either. And breaking is one of the big ball. talking points with this championship from a driver's point of view because the way that the, oper- that the, the technology works, the electric motor that drives the car under braking or in the braking zones turns into a generator to regenerate energy to feed back into the, into the battery. And that regeneration process actually does a lot of the braking on the car, doesn't it? So depending how much of that regen, as they refer to it in Formula E, is being done, it can really affect the brake balance between front and rear. Yeah, and it's something that the drivers have an active role in, a massively active role, because they have a paddle on the back of this. OK, well, let's quickly run you through the grid as it stands. We're getting very close to the start of this race. As we said, it's Daniel Laps, the local boy who sits on pole position. Oliver Turvey behind him. Jean-Éric Verne, championship leader in P3. Jerome... Five red lights on and they're off. And here we go. We're racing in Berlin. Daniel Lapp gets a reasonably good start there. Clear away from Oliver Turvey. Jean-Éric Verne all over the back of Turvey. OK, you are listening as I take a breath to Formula E Radio, where we're bringing you live and uninterrupted coverage of the Berlin e at the historic Tempelhof Airport, uh, a circuit constructed specifically for this event. And we are now into lap 35 of 45, 10 to go. And it's the two Audis of Daniel Apt and Lucas Degrassi way out in front, apt four seconds ahead of Degrassi. And then a 15 second gap back to Jean-Éric Verne in third. He overtakes Where? on the start finish straight, oh. does he? No, he's no, overcome no. it. He's gonna... Locks his both front brakes, gone really oh, wide. That's Nelson. PK, just kept it out the wall. But because he was in this small train of cars, he has lost five positions in the space of one corner. It was going into turn one. Oh, and we got and who's another that? incident in turn three. And that is Lopez. Lopez has spun. Lopez has spun in turn three. So we had the leader of that group, PK, nearly put it in the wall. Lopez spin. We've, we're, it's just too much to keep up with, really, isn't it? <laughs> it's all going on. Turn we... nine, down towards turn ten. The big left-hander of turn ten, and it is Daniel Apt who's going to win the Berlin E Prix in front of his home crowd. Daniel Apt, the Berlin E Prix winner. Behind Daniel Apt, it's Lucas de Grassi who brings it home for a one-two for Audi. A stunning weekend for them. Utterly dominant from start to finish. The home crowd will be going crazy. The team will be going crazy as well. Jean-Éric Verne, the championship leader, comes home 12 seconds behind Daniel Apt in third position. Sebastian Buemi finishes in P4 with Oliver Turvey, a commendable P5 for him. Well, perhaps not the most exciting Formula E race we've ever had. However, that's measuring it against the standard, which is incredibly high. Most Formula E races are action-packed from start to finish and every single lap in between. Today we had action at the beginning, we had a lot of action at the end, very close racing. In the beginning we had a little bit of a lull, which I guess is uh, is understandable. It's got to come at some point. It certainly wasn't a terrible race, that's for sure. Uh, one thing it definitely was, was dominated by the Audi Sport team and Daniel Apt in particular. I'm so pleased for Daniel Apt. He thoroughly deserved his win today. He was in a league of his own. Um, and you know, it's such a shame for him that he's not really in contention for this championship because if he had had the 25 points from his victory in Hong Kong that was subsequently taken away from him due to a simple clerical error by his team where they lodged the wrong part number with the FIA, which is against the rules, um, Daniel lost his 25 points, he'd be right in this championship fight. And such a nice guy, such an underrated driver, and a guy that's always had to fight against, particularly in Formula E terms, against uh, you know people criticising him or people saying that uh, you know he's driving for a team that, that uh, runs under his own name, the apt team. He's up against Lucas de Grassi, uh, a pretty serious force over the first three th- seasons of, uh, of Formula E. So Daniel Apt has been given a, an Audi factory drive this year, and I personally think is absolutely making the most of it and doing a thoroughly, thoroughly good job. So congratulations to Daniel. I hope he parties hard 
uh, tonight in his home city. A great place to win a race in front of your home crowd uh, for him and for the team, of course. These days doing Formula E commentary on, on FE Radio, Formula E Radio, are, they're really enjoyable. I do really enjoy them. Uh, they're long days because we go in uh, in the morning to cover qualifying and we're there all day. I mean, it's now, what, uh, 20 to 8 in the evening when I'm now going home. Um, and we're sat inside a pretty much a windowless studio for more or less the whole day. So not only have we missed this wonderful sunshine that looks like it's been all day, uh, we missed other few, a few other big things going on today. There's the Royal Wedding. Not that fussed about that, if I'm really honest. Also missed the FA Cup final. Nightmare. Uh, it was great working with uh, Claire Cottingham again, who was covering all of the social media side of Formula E today, uh, and Harrison Newey, Adrian's son, uh, who's actually a really nice guy and really knowledgeable, really good in front of a microphone. Um, so I thought today went really well from outside. If you were listening, I, I hope you enjoyed it. Um, Harrison told me some brilliant stories over lunch about his dad. <laughs> uh, I'd love to be able to share them with you, but I really can't, because Adrian will absolutely kill me and him. Um, but really good to get an insight into the inner workings of Mr. Adrian Newey today. <laughs> so another successful event on the Formula E calendar. Uh, and as I said, three rounds still to go. One in Zurich next up. Going back to motor racing in Switzerland after 64 years of it not happening there. Formula E are the people to take it back. Can't wait for that. Looks like a, a stunning location, uh, proper downtown alongside uh, the shores of the lake there. Uh, so really looking forward to that one. And then we roll on to the championship finale, a double header back in New York. Uh, when I was there last year, it was a really great event. It was a great location uh, on the streets of Brooklyn, looking back at the backdrop of downtown Manhattan and the Statue of Liberty. Uh, one of the things Formula E does incredibly well is put spectacular events on in spectacular places. And this season has been absolutely no different. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it, whether you watched the race, whether you listened to our coverage, um, or whether you've just been following it across social media or whatever. Let me know what you thought. Uh, if you've got any questions about Formula E, about the Berlin e Prix, or about races moving forward, or just about Formula E in general, fire them in. I would love Monday's Q&A video to be Formula E heavy, given that there's no Formula One this weekend, and it's a Formula E race weekend too. So let me know what you want to do, what you, what you want to know about Formula E, whether you like it, whether you don't like it. Uh, have you not yet got your head around the fact that there's no screaming engine noise? That's fine, I know that lots of people feel that way. Let me know, I may well be a big supporter, but I'm also very open to the fact that not everybody else is. Let me know what you would like to see that could be different. What could Formula E do differently that might convince you to become a supporter of this groundbreaking new championship?